Bigger Talks, Bigger Talks. We're back once again. It's June, June 2nd, that is 2023. Six months, six months has blown by in the year 2023. It's been a very different, up, down, challenging, spiritual evolution um, year. So in this episode, it's going to be me, myself, and I. I'm going solo, and I want to talk about my healing experience um, these past few months and what it's been like. And I like to coin the term uh, ego death, right? I've been killing off my old ego, the old self, grieving the pain and loss of the old self. Uh, but, But before we get into the episode, it is miracle season. So for the month of June, 35% off of all its miracle season merch. Hats, mugs, hoodies, whatever, 35% off. And the code, the discount code is MIRACLES, capital M-I-R-A-C-L-E-S. All you got to do is go to itsmiraclesseason.co.co, or you could just go to my Instagram and go to my link tree and hit the link with It's Miracle Season merch, get 35% off, tell a friend, share that, and the intention behind this is that it's miracle season is a metamorphosis. It's a transformation. It is a spiritual, you know, vibration and name. And I think everybody deserves to have this merch on. And I feel like the more, the better. And I feel like this word and this terminology and this phrase will help more people heal. Right. When you say it's miracle season, it feels good. When you look at it, it feels good. So 35% off the code is miracles. M I R A C L E S all caps, go to my website, it's miracleseason.co, and get 35% off. But let's get right into it, good people. So, yeah, so I wanted to talk about the ego death. I've been in this phase probably, like, since the start of 2023. I was just trying to understand, like, who am I, what am I, what's going on, what's new in my life, what's changing, what's staying the same, And it's been very psychological, you know, it's been very internal, emotional, mental, and more importantly, spiritual. Uh, I am also, um, because you guys know I'm big into numerology, Um, I'm big into numerology, and this is my personal year one. So in personal year one, this is a fresh start, uh, a brand new start to the next nine years of my life, first year in a nine year cycle. So year one. You just you just feel new. I feel like a new person, a new identity, a new. I just feel new. It's like all the stuff I've done in the past, from all the TV shows to the books I've written, um, to the relationships I built, to the brand deals and opportunity and commercials, were all great, and I appreciate them. I'm so grateful for those opportunities and those experiences. But that ego, that that old self, is dying off, and it's like I'm no longer attached to that identity of that person. Because I'm having an ego death. And to be quite honest and transparent and authentic, you know, I created a character in those nine years, right? Because that's how I survived up until now. Like, you know, um, part of who I was and part of that person, most of that person was me putting on a mask, right? Covering up my pain, you know, behind my success, covering up my pain based on how I looked, right? And At the time, I didn't know I was doing that, but I was never being my fully transparent self because I was under impression since a child because of trauma that I only would get love if I was doing something for someone or if I was making someone else happy. And that wound was created from abandonment wound, you know, abandonment from my mom, uh, abandonment from my family members not getting the love or the attention I wanted or needed as a kid, you know, so I only felt that the only way Eric would be loved, the little boy in me, I have to be successful. I have to accomplish things. I have to be great. I have to be a perfectionist. I have to look good. I have to present myself positive all the time. I have to be super happy and super courageous and strong and confident. So in those years, I never felt anything. I never felt shit. Like I didn't feel my feelings. I just kind of suppressed them and kept going. It was with the positivity, motivation, and and granted, 
all those things was great. And they, they all worked because that was my survival mechanism to protect myself from getting hurt. Right. But, you know, now on the other side of that, I can no longer live that purpose. That purpose of that person is gone. That's that soul is done. It's tired. It's time for a new creation where my complete self, complete self is at the surface, right? Where, you know, my shadow self, which I suppressed for so long is just with the light self, right? There's a quote that says, the light hides the truth, but the dark reveals the truth. So I'm at this space where I'm trying to build and have rapport and intimacy with my shadow self, all the stuff I'm afraid of, all the pain, all the darkness, all the stuff, you know, I suppress and avoid it because like, oh, well, you know, it's like, no, that's a part of who you are. <laughs> You're from Baltimore, Maryland. You grew up in an inner city where it was tough. And mom and dad was never together. You, you don't come from a functional family and it's miracle season. <laughs> and this is who you are. But there's a lot of pain in this person. There's a lot of shame and guilt. Um, A lot of it is also from my past life, right? You know, uh, in my past life, uh, I was told that, um, for one, I was a warrior, a spiritual warrior, which I am in this lifetime as well, but I was a healer of some sort. So... Uh, whatever that was, I think I was a doctor healer or something. I think I was a doctor and whatever the decisions were, whatever the opportunity was, it was life or death. So I could never say no to someone because it was life or death. So I always felt in this lifetime, people always needed me. And if not something bad would happen, that was my, that was my psyche. So I never knew how to say yes to myself without saying yes to someone else first. So I always put myself last to sacrifice and be the martyr. I mean, the power of Pisces as well, we kind of have that, to take care of someone else, to try to save someone else to neglect myself, right? So it was like, it was, it was, it was, it was all we, I. It wasn't I, we, all. So I put the all, the we before me. But you suffer because you're not being your real self because it's people pleasing. It's um, afraid of someone leaving you uh afraid that if you be your true authentic self that people might like might not like you or might not love you or so it's deep it's it's uh it's a lot and i've been dealing with that since the start of 2023 and uh probably the last month like may oh it's tough uh i'm, I'm actually in the phase they call the dark night of the soul and when I tell you this thing is intense and nothing makes sense, you're questioning everything. You're like, where am I at? What's going on? What does life look like? You know, you're always looking into the future. And I realize in these moments, um, I've never been present my entire life. I just always been, what's next? What's next? So when I talk to my therapist and healer, they would say, why don't you go have fun? Or um, I'm getting that you need the rest. Like your soul is tired or... You're always giving, you're always doing, but you're not being, you're not being, and you need to go have fun. And I was like, yeah, but I feel like I never can have fun because since a child, I feel like if I would have fun, something bad would happen. And again, you know, my healer was telling me that in a past life, if I had fun, something bad happened. So in this lifetime, I come with that energy and that's why I can't be present because but we kind of rewrote that contract and forgave and removed that uh, wound, whatever that was. Um, I want to talk about something that I discovered on uh, um, her name is she's powerful on Instagram. Uh, Nicole. Let's see, Nicole. I'm looking her up now. What's her name? Holistic psychologist. That's her name on Instagram. Nicole LaPere, Dr. Nicole LaPere. So she had a post that I say, I want to read it to you. Um, let me read it to you one second. Thank you for your patience because you're listening. So here it goes. And just for context, this is me as a child. This is me my entire life growing up. You were easy and quiet. People told you that you took care of yourself. What it's like to grow up as the lost child. So me, the lost child, really feel like I'm not lost. I'm found because I know everything will, will come off that way for most of my friends because I was always a leader and captain. However, listen to this. The lost child is usually very quiet, shy, or introverted, highly intel intelligent, highly sensitive, 
Distant from the family's chaos, spends a lot of time alone, yes. Gets little attention from parents figures, yes. The lost child heard, you, you basically take care of yourself. You're self-sufficient. You were the easiest child. Granted, I did well in school. I wasn't a bad kid. So in Baltimore, usually the bad kids get attention because they're bad. You know, they're always in trouble. Where I did good, I didn't get that. So I was also quiet and shy, introverted. I wasn't as outspoken as I am today. Usually parents take pride in a lost child because they see their lack of needs as a sign that the child is doing well. Right. So I've never acted as if I needed anything from anyone. I just did everything on my own terms and I figured it out. I got good grades. I was a leader on my teams and everyone came to me for help. You know, as I talked previous, oh, I was a healer in a past life. Of course they would come to me. Right. In reality, the lost child has withdrawn and usually disassociated, disassociated to cope with the environment. As an adult, the lost child might struggle with communication, never learn proper socialization, like, yeah, communicating my needs, right? Be extremely conflict avoidant. I don't really like no drama if I don't have to um, involve myself in it. Deny what they feel. I'm fine. I always say I'm good and I'm always going to be good. And I truly believe that. But it's also with me running from my feelings. A pattern that kept them safe in childhood. Stay small and invisible. Today, you no longer need to believe to be invisible or needless to be loved and accepted. Asserting your needs is a key part of healing. It is important to start to fully express yourself, set clear boundaries, and get to know who you actually are. Dark night of the soul, ego death, really getting to the root of all the trauma and challenges I suppressed because I never wanted to feel what I had to feel to be where I'm at today. If you were the lost child, share your experience. And come. So anyway, so on this journey, what I discovered was this. I had to ask myself some real questions and the download I got was Eric, the person who puts on his all these masks and play all these characters, um, only loves himself if he's accomplishing something or he's helping someone or he's making somebody else happy. So a lot of my success and love for myself and fulfillment was if I was making you happy, if I was accomplishing something or if I was helping someone else. So then the question came, does Eric love himself if he's not accomplishing, if he's not successful, if he's not helping someone? And I said, damn, I do not love and accept myself if those things are not happening because I was a human doing and not a human being. And I only felt that I would get love and acceptance if I was accomplishing, doing, or making someone else happy, which is very bad and very unhealthy, um, big picture and on a root level. So yeah, there's those things that came up um, and I just saved face and space for so long because I wanted to make everybody else comfortable. I want to make everybody else safe. Uh, so I'm a, I'm adjust to the, to the temperature of the room or the energy because if I don't, people are going to leave me or I'm not going to be loved and accept it, right? So what, what I did was created a monster, created this guy who appears to be, oh, everything's perfect, everything's fun, oh, you're so happy and positive, oh, how are you so positive? And really, I was positive, but it, the positivity was also pain upside down, you know what I'm saying? So now in my true self, my true authentic self, I'm sitting in the pain of my past and of the moment of things I've been challenged with these last few months. And really sitting down and saying, yeah, you can't save nobody. You have to save yourself. <laughs> and it, 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 it opens me up. Be like, damn, I can go so hard for someone else. But I can't go hard for me. Unless it's connected or attached to someone else. Codependency. I depend on people to depend on me to be me to help them. But what if no one needs your help? Who are you? So, yeah, the ego death is real. Um, I'm getting on the other side. I got to be my complete self with any and everybody. Cause you know, also living in LA for 13 years, uh, working in a corporate setting when you first you had to go, you had to be clean shaven and having high, you know, high end clients of wealthy people. You feel like you got to adjust to your environment. So you put on these capes or these masks because you feel like, Oh, I got to look this way. I got to talk this way. I got to dress this way and realize like, no, you're love no matter what. And if people don't love you for your true self, then they're not your people. They're not your tribe, right? So uh, I just wanted to share that. I think it's vital and important for me to share that on this episode of Thicker Talks. Please share, subscribe, like, follow us on Instagram. 
And um, but I, I want more listeners. I'm going to get more listeners. We have more listeners. I'm claiming that now. Bigger Talks podcast is the biggest part podcast in the world. And by the way, remember, it's Miracle Season merch. 35% off. The code is Miracles. Go to itsmiracleseason.co and get you a hat, get you a hoodie, get you a t-shirt, get you a mug. Support and share. But this is about the people. We want We want the world to be full of miracles. But we got to wear it. We got to feel it. And we got to be it. So... Yeah, that's it for this episode. Um, if you like it, comment, share. Uh, if you can relate, you know, let's speak. Let's talk about it. But I just kind of wanted to give that uh, a little thing of what I've been going through and the ebbs and flows of it, what it looks like, what it feels like. It's been very uncomfortable. It's been very challenging. I've been questioning a lot of things. And it's deep. It's raw. It's real. But guess what? That's who I am. Yeah, I'm positive. I'm nice. I'm sweet. I'm um, you know, I'm good energy, but I'm also raw, authentic, and real. And I got to met that side of me, that shadow side, meet the other side, and they come together. And then I'll be be a complete whole person all the time. So it's Miracle Season. Go download the podcast, share it, subscribe, and uh, I, appreciate your, I, I appreciate your support. Thank you for listening. If you're in a car, if you're at work, at your desk, if you're up at late at night, I don't know what word thank you for listening so be great be beautiful be raw be authentic be transparent be your complete self and uh it's okay to make love and give attention to your shadow self that's what i'm working through now and once i get through this process you guys will know about it so um talk soon peace love and gratitude i'm out